Hello children, welcome to the online platform of Divine Public School. Hope you all are well and safe. Today I am here with a video lecture on understanding quadrilaterals. So let's begin the chapter. Topics that we will discuss in this video are curves, polygons, then quadrilaterals, types of quadrilaterals, problems on quadrilaterals. What is a curve? A curve is a continuous and smooth flowing line without any sharp turns. One way to recognize a curve is that it bends and changes its direction at least once. So when you take a sharp pencil and when you draw anything in one stroke without, moving the, uh, without removing the pencil, then a curve is formed. A curve can be a straight line and it can be a curvilinear line also. The types of curves. So open curve an open curve does not enclose any area within itself it has its two end points so curves which have different starting and ending point such curves are called open curves a closed curve does not have end points and encloses an area or a region it is formed by joining the end points of an open curve together or in simple if you want to define closed curve then a closed curve is a curve which does not have a starting or end point circles ellipses are formed from closed curves only the simple closed curve a simple closed curve changes direction but does not cross itself while changing direction a simple curve can be open and close both so simple curve is what? A simple curve is such curves which does not intersect itself at any point. Such curves are called simple curve. Non-simple curves, a curve that crosses itself is called a non-simple curve. For example, you can see the figure. This curve is crossing its path. So that's why it is a non-simple curve. Polygon is a flat or plain figure the two, a two dimensional closed figure made up of line segment or in very simple if you want to explain polygon then polygon is a simple closed curve made up of entirely of line segment so it's a simple closed curve that means it is close it is a closed figure and it does not intersect itself at any point and it is made up of line segment the word and it does not include any curved side means any of the side of a polygon is not a curved line the word polygon is derived from the greek language word which means po where poly means many and gona means angle the line segment which is used to make a polygon is known as the polygon sides or edges a minimum of three line segment is required to make a polygon the corner or points where two line segments meet each other is known as the vertex of a polygon and the line segment formed by joining non-adjacent vertices are called diagonals of the polygon. The types of polygons. Regular, regular and irregular polygon. Regular polygons have congruent sides and interior angles. A polygon which has all its sides of equal length and all its interior angles of equal measure is called a regular polygon. So in a regular polygon all the sides are of equal length and it's all the interior angles are also equal in measure. Examples are equilateral triangle. In an equilateral triangle all the sides are of equal length and all the angles are of equal length. Similarly a square is also a regular figure. It has also all the sides equal and all the angles are equal. Now irregular polygon. So a polygon which is not regular is called irregular polygon. Means it's all the sides are not equal and it's all the angles are not e equal. Now example rectangle is equiangular. Means in a rectangle all the angles are of 90 degree but its sides are not equal. So it is a irregular polygon. Similarly, a rhombus. A rhombus has all the sides equal in length, but its angles are not equal. Means it is not equiangular. Therefore, it is an irregular polygon. A convex 
polygon closes in an interior area without looking dented. None of its interior angles point inward. In geometry, you could have a four-sided polygon that points outward in all direction like a kite or you can could have the same four sides so that of them point inward forming a dart. The kite is convex, the dart is a concave. You can see here, it's a convex figure and its sides are outward. Whereas in a concave figure, its sides are inverted. Now let's do some detailing about the convex and the concave, its difference. So if we see a convex polygon, it's all the interior angles are less than 180 degree. Whereas in a concave polygon, at least one angle is greater than 180 degree. Means in a convex polygon, all the angles are not reflex. Any of the angle is not reflex. Whereas in case of a concave polygon, at least one of the angle is reflex. You can see with the help of an example, in a convex polygon, you can see none of the angles are reflex. Means all the interior angles are less than 180 degree. Whereas in a convex polygon, you can see at least one of the angle is greater or at least one or two angles are greater than 180 degree and they are that means they are uh, a concave polygon have reflex angles another point of difference is if you draw the diagonals of a convex polygon you will see that all the diagonals will lie inside the figure but if you draw the diagonals in a polygon in a concave polygon you can see you know diagonals when we non adjacent verti vertices are joined with the help of a line a diagonal is formed so when you see in a concave polygon when you draw, make the diagonals you will see either one of the diagonal or some part of the diagonal always lies outside the figure means diagonals may lie out are lying outside the figure in the exterior of the figure so this these are the two basic difference between convex polygon and concave polygon the first difference is in a convex polygon all the interior angles are less than 180 degree whereas in a concave polygon all the angles are or any one or two angles may be it, it is greater than 180 degree in a convex polygon all the diagonals lie lies inside the figure whereas in a concave polygon one or any part of the diagonal or two means depending on the figure it may lie outside rectangle a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles thus all the angles in a rectangle are equal that means a rectangle all the angles are of 90 degree moreover the opposite sides of a rectangle are parallel and equal and the diagonals bisect each other and they are also equal now let us discuss some of the properties of the rectangle a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four equal internal angles each internal angle of a rectangle measures 90 degree as the opposite angles of a rectangle are equal a rectangle is called a parallelogram the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal and parallel the diagonals of a rectangle bisect each other and are of same length the two diagonals of a rectangle bisect each other at different angles one obtuse angle and the other an acute angle with the help of figure let's understand it so in a rectangle the si opposite sides are equal and they are parallel also second all the angles are of 90 degree so you can see here all the angles are of 90 degree the third property is the diagonals are equal in a rectangle so if this is one of the diagonal is 10 centimeter then other one is also of 10 centimeter and the fourth property is 
the diagonals intersect each other at different angles means this angle if you can see it's more than 90 degrees so this is obtuse angle and this one if you see it is less than 90 degree so one of the angle is obtuse another angle is acute angle and some other various properties which a parallelogram is having that also it exhibit for example the diagonals bisect each other that means this length and this length will be equal and this length and this length will also be equal so these are the properties of a rectangle now square Square is a quadrilateral with four equal sides and angles. It is also an angular quadrilateral as both equiangular quadrilateral as both its sides and angles are equal. Just like rectangle, a square has four angles of 90 degree each. It can also be seen as a rectangle whose two adjacent sides are equal. So, square is a quadrilateral in which all the sides are equal and it's all the angles are equal and all the angles are of 90 degree like like a rectangle a square also have all the angles of 90 degree each so we can say that square is a rectangle in which both the adjacent side means in which the two adjacent sides are of equal length now let's study about the properties of a rectangle with the uh, square with the help of a figure so in a figure in a square all the sides are equal then opposite sides are parallel So these two property which are of parallelogram then diagonals bisect each other. So this one and this one is equal and this one and this one is equal. So these are the and one more property is there that adjacent angles are supplementary means the sum of this angle and this angle is equals to 180 degree this angle sum and this angle sum is also equals to 180 degree these are the properties of a parallelogram that is exhibited by a square but a square has certain different properties also what are they first one all the angles are of equal are of 90 degree so this is the first proper uh, first property which a square is having second the diagonals are of equal length means both the diagonals are of equal length so this is the second property third diagonals bisect each other at 90 degree means the angle formed here between the diagonals are 90 degree that means these are these diagonals are the perpendicular bisector of each other then another property diagonals bisect the angles means this diagonal has bisected this angle in two parts 45 degree and this one is also 45 degree so this is also a property of a square so these are the property of a specific property of a square and one more property as you know it's a square so all the sides are of equal length this is also a specific property of a square Now some of the basic properties of square are as under a square is a quadrilateral with four equal sides and four equal internal angles. It is a rhombus with four equal angles means if a rhombus has all the angles equal to 90 degree then it will be considered as a square. A square is a rectangle with its two adjacent sides equal. So a square is a rectangle because uh, a square is a rectangle with or uh, its adjacent sides equal it is a parallelogram with all four internal angles equal to 90 degree and the adjacent sides equal in length the opposite sides of a square are parallel to each other 
the diagonals of a square are equal in length bisect each other and are the per are and are perpendicular to each other each diagonal of a square divides the square into two equal isosceles triangles the diagonal of a square bisect the internal angles at the two point joining it the two diagonals of a square bisect each other so the four vertices of the square are equidistant from the point of bisection this means a circle can be formed with the center as at the point of bisection now parallelogram a parallelogram as the name suggest is a simple quadrilateral whose opposite sides are parallel thus it has two pair of parallel sides moreover these opposite sides are in a parallelogram are equal and the diagonals bisect each other so with the help of figure let's understand so in a parallelogram two pair of opposite sides are equal and parallel so this side is equals to this side and this side is parallel to this side this side is equals to this side and they are parallel to each other this is the first property now the second property is opposite angles are equal so this angle is equals to this angle and this angle is equals to this angle then diagonal bisect each other the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other that means this side will be equals to this one and this side will be equals to this one and then adjacent angles are supplementary means the sum of angle a and angle d will be 180 degree the sum of angle a and angle b will be equals to 180 degree similarly b plus c angle will be also equals to 180 degree that means the adjacent angles are supplementary so these are these are the basic properties or basic features of a parallelogram so now let's read once more the properties of a parallelogram so the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent means they are equal the opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal the consecutive angles of a parallelogram are supplementary means adjacent angles are supplementary the diagonals of a parallelogram always bisect each other that means diagonals bisect each other and each diagonal of a parallelogram bisect it into two congruent triangles means when you draw a diagonal of a parallelogram it bisects it used to divide the parallelogram in two congruent triangles now let's study about rhombus a rhombus is a quadrilateral whose all four sides are equal in length and opposite sides are parallel to each other however the angles are not equal to 90 degree so a rhombus is a parallel is a quadrilateral and it's all is such a quadrilateral whose all the four sides are equal in length and the opposite sides are parallel to each other however its angles are not equals to 90 degree a rhombus with right angle would become a square if you draw a rhombus or if you make a rhombus and if its all the angles are of 90 degree then it will be a square another name for rhombus is diamond as it looks similar to the diamond suit in playing cards so let's study about the properties of a rhombus so first of all it hold all the properties which a parallelogram is having that means opposite sides are equal and parallel opposite angles are equal diagonals bisect each other and the adjacent angles are supplementary so these are the basic property other than that it has certain more properties that are its all the sides are equal in length so all the sides of a rhombus are equal in length then another property of a rhombus is that the diagonals bisect each other and they bisect each other at 90 degrees so the angles formed here are 
90 degree. So the diagonals form 90 degree angle. Then another property of a property of a uh, of a rhombus is that the rhombus bisect the diagonals of a rhombus bisect the internal angles. Means this diagonal is bisecting this angle B here and angle D here. Similarly, this diagonal is bisecting this angle A here and angle C here. So these are the basic properties of a rhombus which are other than that of a parallelogram. So a rhombus exhibit all the properties which a parallelogram is having as well as it exhibits some specific properties also. Some of the properties of a rhombus are first of all a rhombus has all the sides equal. So a rhombus is a parallelogram whose all the adjacent sides are equal. Now some properties of its angles are rhombus has four interior angles. The sum of interior angles of a rhombus add up to 360 degree. That means a rhombus has four interior angles and the sum of the interior angles of a rhombus is equals to 360 degree. The opposite angles of a rhombus are equal to each other like a parallelogram. The adjacent angles are supplementary like a parallelogram. In a rhombus, diagonal bisect each other at 90 degree like a square. And the diagonals of a rhombus bisect the angles. So these are the properties of rhombus. A trapezium. A trapezium is called a trapezium in UK, United Kingdom and it is called a trapezoid in US. It's a quadrilateral which has only one pair of parallel sides. The parallel sides are referred to as the bases and the other two sides are called legs or lateral sides. So in the given figure if we talk about the properties of a trapezium so a trapezium has certain property first it's it has one pair of sides parallel and these other two sides are not equal means non parallel sides are not equal a simple trapezium is defined as it's it has one pair of parallel sides and its non parallel sides are not equal then additional property which it is having that is the these two angles these are two co-interior angles and the sum of these two angles is equals to 180 degree similarly the sum of these two angles is e also equals to 180 degree now you will say how it is 180 degree as you can see here these two are parallel lines and if I extend these two parallel lines from here and here so this is a transversal and you know the interior angles on the same side of the transversal sum up to 180 degree. Because of that these two angles are sum is equals to 180 degree and these two angles sum is equals to 180 degree. Now properties of a trapezium one it has only one pair of opposite sides are parallel to each other the diagonals of a trapezium intersect each other but there is no hard and fast any rule there that the diagonals are equal or the diagonals bisect each other they the diagonals used to intersect each other the sides of a trapezium which are not parallel are not equal except in the isosceles trapezium the sum of the interior sides of of a trapezium is equals to 360 degree that means the sum of the interior angles of a trapezium is equals to 360 degree now isosceles trapezium so a trapezium which is called trapezium in UQ and trapezoid US is a quadrilateral with at least one pair of parallel sides that also has not two non parallel sides of the same length so let's study about this in detail because it is having many properties
so in an isocellus trapezium as you can see this side and this side it is having one pair of parallel sides now the second property it is having that its non parallel sides are equal so this side and this side is equal in length now in an isocellus trapezium the diagonals are equal so these two diagonals db and ac are equal in length so these are some properties other than that its base angles are also equal means this angle d is equals to angle c and this angle a is equals to angle b so base angles of a isosceles trapeziums are equal that means angle d is equals to angle c and angle a is equals to angle b let's study about it it has a pair of parallel side it has a pair of opposite sides that are congruent both pair of opposite sides are uh, angles are supplementary as is they sum to 180 degree consecutive angles along both bases are congruent and diagonals are congruent consecutive angles along both bases are congruent means you can say the base angles are equal and diagonals are also equal now let's study about the kite in euclidean geometry a kite is a quadrilateral whose four side can be grouped in two pair of equal length side that are adjacent to each other in contrast a parallelogram also has two pair of equal length side but they are opposite to each other instead of being adjacent so kite now let's study some of the properties of a kite so in a kite as you can see here we have two pair of adjacent sides which are equal this is the first pair of adjacent sides which are equal and these are the second pair of adjacent sides which are equal second property now the diagonals intersect each other at 90 degree so this is the second property now third property is this base this angle and this angle where the two adjacent sides are meeting with each other that means where where the two unequal adjacent sides are meeting with each other that two angles are equal these two angles are equal this is the third property fourth property now this diagonal this is the vertical diagonal and this is the horizontal diagonal now this vertical diagonal is known as the main diagonal and this is called the smaller diagonal so the main diagonal is bisecting the smaller diagonal so the main diagonal bisect the smaller diagonal then this is the fourth property now fifth property is that this diagonal this main diagonal used to bisect these two internal angles so you can see here this diagonal has divided these two angles equally so this is the fifth property now now the sixth property is if we draw the main diagonal it divides the kite in two congruent triangle you can see here this side is equals to this side this side equals to this side and this is the common base side so that means these two triangles are congruent to each other that means the main diagonal bisects and the main diagonal intersect or divides the kite in two congruent triangles now the next property if we see the smaller diagonal the smaller diagonal divides this kite in two triangles and these two triangles are isosceles triangle upper side if you see this triangle this side and this side is equal 
so this is an isosceles triangle similarly this one this is also an isosceles triangle so the smaller diagonal is dividing this kite in two two isosceles two different isosceles triangles so these are the property of the kite so let's read one time more the properties of a kite a kite is symmetrical in terms of its angle the two diagonals of a kite bisect each other at 90 degrees the main diagonal of a kite bisect the other diagonal the smaller diagonal of a kite divided into two isosceles triangle the main diagonal of a kite bisect the other diagonal the smaller diagonal of a kite divided into two isosceles triangle the angles of a kite are equal whereas the unequal sides of a kite meet the kite can be seen as a pair of congruent triangle with a common base 